Okay, so let's have a look at the areas of mutability and immutability. First of all, what I'm going to do is create a integer variable called num1 and set it to 10 and then I'm going to create a string variable str1 and set it to Duncan and I'm going to create a list variable an st1 and create myself a simple list. Okay, so the interesting bit here is how do we store those? Well, we talk about jam jars and so on, but we're obviously where these are stored in memory. So when we store the number 10, obviously somewhere in memory the number 10 is stored. And our num1 points to that location in memory. Um, how much memory does it take? Well, actually, Python's quite clever because it depends on the size of the number and it'll allocate enough memory to store that number. It's not like other programming languages where we'd have to specify how big that was. So if this is a if this is a large number, it may actually span over several bytes. If it's a small number, it might just take one byte. Obviously, the string we store the ASCII codes for Duncan in memory. So D U N C A and N all get stored in memory, and STR one points to that memory location. And similarly with our list, one, two, three, uh, LST one points to there. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, it's kind of what we'd expect to happen. The interesting thing is if we uh, allocate another variable. So let's say I do num two equals num one. What actually happens? Well, you may suspect that uh, Python would create a new label num2, point it to somewhere new in memory and make a copy of num1. That's kind of what happens. They're clearly independent variables. But actually what happens is num2, the label for num2 pointer, actually just points to the same location as num1. Similarly, if I did str2 equals str1, the same would happen. str2 now would just point to that same location and similarly with list. So if I did list2 equals list1, list2 would point to that same location there. So let's have a look at that in action. str1 and list1. Uh, Num1's um, been assigned the value 10, so it's obviously an integer variable. str1 has been assigned to a string Duncan, so it's a string variable. And not surprisingly, lst1 has been assigned to a list. 1, 2, 3, we know it's a list because it's in square brackets. And we're just printing out the number, the string, and the list. So let's have a quick look at that. Um, and there we go, yep, 10, Duncan, and 1, 2, 3. So that quite clearly worked. What I just want to do here is, so we can keep track of them, I'm actually going to print uh, the name of the variables in each case as well. Because um, in a minute we're going to get some more kind of variables coming into here as well. So I want to actually make sure that I know which one is which. It should be pretty clear from the actual data in there anyway. So I've got the, the list of those. So this tells me the variable. Now there's another function you may not have come across called the ID. The ID returns the identifier or the reference in memory to the actual variable. So I want to also return the ID of each of these variables as well. So I'm taking number one and I'm passing it to the ID function, which will return me the ID of that particular one. So do the same for each of them. Okay, so let's run that and see what we get now. So it's the same that we as we had before. We're seeing uh, the numbers, but now we're getting this big long number here, and this is equivalently uh, to a, a kind of a pointer. It's a reference in memory. It's where these things are stored, and it's actually pointing to the object in memory because, as you may be aware, uh, num1, string1, and LST1 are actually objects. 
uh, although for all intents and purposes most of the time we can treat them like variables. So just take this as it's a, a pointer to the location in memory where the variable stored. So let's see what happens now if we do what we said we were going to do which is create some new variables for each of these and pop those into uh, locations in memory and see what happens. So fortunately here's some I prepared earlier. There we go. So I've now created <coughs> excuse me, uh, three new variables num2, str2 and list2. Uh, I'm going to copy my statements down. Actually now I've got them more printed below. Just give me a second and I'll get those. Okay, I've actually got them in the wrong order now so I just need to allocate my actual variables up there. So we're uh, allocating the num1 string1 list2, we're allocating those or assigning those to str2 as well. So str2 should get a copy of str1 and list2 should get a copy of list1. And then we're printing them all out one after the other. So we're printing num1 and num2, its ID and its value, string1, string2, its ID and the value, and list1, list2, ID and value. So let's have a look what happens there. An unexpected indent that's actually with some code just I've got off the uh, bottom of the program here uh, that I don't think you can see okay, let's do that again there we go so you can see num1 num2 uh, are both 10, str1 and str2 are both Duncan, list1, list2, um, oh did I do list12 there? Oh no I just printed list12 sorry, syntax, uh, typo error there of mine in the code, uh, is 1, 2, 3. But the interesting thing is look at the IDs of each of these, you can see the ID of num1 and num2 are identical, you can see that the ID of str1 and str2 are identical, and you can see that the uh, ID of list1 and list2 are also identical. So that proves what we've just talked about, that as we create the variables num2, str2 and this2, it doesn't actually create a new variable for them, but it just points to the existing variable. It, it's memory efficient, rather than create a copy, all we need to do is point the label to the same content. But now what we need to do is think about the implications of that. Okay, back to our piece of paper now. Having a look at what we've got uh, and understanding now that this is what's happened, the question now is what happens if I do something like num1 equals 15? Well we've kind of been teaching that clearly 15 uh, is, is just new data so num1 is a jam jar and I just replace the contents of the jam jar with a number 15 but you can now see that that's going to implicate or uh, affect number 2 because that's pointing to the same memory location. So in fact that's not what happens when we allocate num1 to uh, give it the value 15. What it actually does is it creates uh, somewhere new in memory the number 15 and it merely, merely makes a label from num1 now point down to memory location 15. And that's what we mean when we say integers are immutable because we can't change the value of an integer. Once I've set this 10 up in that box there I can't change the value. If I need a new value, I create a new box and I point the label to it. Now to all intents and purposes, as you're learning Python, it's pretty irrelevant what I'm talking about here. Uh, but as we go on, we'll see that this can catch you out as you get more advanced. One of the other reasons that we consider it being immutable, we talked about it earlier, is the size of this. Even if num1 had been pointing to 10 and there hadn't been a second label to it, number 2, and I say increase num1 to uh, 65 trillion 733 million whatever 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 this would have been a big number and it would have taken more memory and there's not the possibility of just growing this area of memory here to keep track of all the various bytes that make up the number we have to create a new instance of it and move the label and point to the new instance 
what happens to this value 10 in memory well there's a thing called garbage collection which comes around and realizes that nobody's pointing to it and actually would clear that up so that's why numbers are immutable and the same thing with str1 if I now do str1 equals maidens um, again for all the same reasons that we just talked about integers it's a different length string uh, str2 already points to it so I can't just change the contents of memory here what I've got to do is go and create myself a new string object somewhere else in memory and put maidens in there and now str1 will now point to that same memory location when we come to the lists though it's a bit more interesting well lists are actually potentially quite a large construct this could be a huge amount of memory and as you're well aware with lists we've got various operators on lists so I can do things like uh, lst1 dot append four which will put a four on the end of my list now we do have an issue here because list one and list two both point to the same list and I'm going to append to list one the value four so what happens to list two you may think that clearly because it's going to be different it will create a copy of list one in memory put four on and repoint list one to it however let's have a look what actually happens so here we are back in our main program we've got our variables and everything set up just as we had before after doing all this now what I want to do is I want to change each of them so I'm going to make num1 oh, num1 equal to say 20 str1 or maidens and I'm going to do uh, st1 I could use append um, as I did so yeah I might as well stick with that uh, dot append four uh, and what I want to do after I've done that is I want to print out the state of everything again so I'm going to copy all of that and print everything out to see what's happened okay let's run that right let's have a look at this in a bit more detail <coughs> so you can see just as we had before obviously we did not change anything there num1 num2 str1 2 and this one and two all point uh, to the same places in memory what happened then is we reallocated num1 in this line here to the value 20 so you can see num1 now has got a value 20 and you can see that its id is different whereas num2 obviously is still pointing to the thing ending 4-4 that it was before so we've actually created a new um, object in reality but basically a new container and put the number 20 in it and num1 now points to that new container similarly with um, str1 here you can see before str1 ended 496 str1 now is ending 113 so again we've context created a new container a new object effectively and put maidens in it and str now what now points to that new object so again strings are immutable we were unable to change duncan duncan is still sitting there in memory when we attempted to change it through the variable name str1 set it to maidens as we did here in the code what actually happened well all it did is it created maidens somewhere else in memory and moved str1 to point to it however when we come down and look at the lists this seems a bit confusing because list one we appended the value four to it so here's list one yeah it's got the value four appended to it where is it in memory ends 816 where was it before oh it was still in the same memory location 816 593 4 6816 593 4 6186 it's the same location so actually lists as we well know are mutable that means we can change them so what's actually happened here is we've appended four to the actual original list list one still pointing to the same location the location now also contains the value four what was the implication on that on list two that we didn't change well it was pointing to the same location so it also changed and that's the bit that catches lots of people out 
because of the way we assume it works and the way we teach variables and we think list one and list two are actually separate variables but now you understand they actually point to the same object when we change one of those objects because they're mutable like lists are the references are all pointing to the same object so they both change okay so hopefully you've got your mind around that let's now think a bit more about how that happens and what problems it might cause us okay so just looking back at our code here we, um, particularly in the area of the list what we did is obviously we appended to the end of list one the value four so we presume it just kind of got put down here but quite clearly after we created list one this would have taken up some space in memory here and the memory below it may now have been used up for some other variables so when we came to append 4 to here how did it actually do it well I'll be honest with you I don't actually know but it's going to be something like this what we had to do is when we put 4 down here when we added 4 to the list we actually had to find some space in memory down here 4 and put the 4 in there and we needed to have some way to link all the various elements in the list so in fact when we store 1 we also need to store where 2 is as well because it may not be sequentially after it in memory and 2 needs to have a reference to 3 and 3 needs to have a reference to 4 which means when we come to create lists not only are we storing all their individual values but we're storing a reference to the next item in the list and that allows me to dynamically move things up and down and find anywhere within the list uh, it's actually called a linked list and this illustrates why lists are quite inefficient in memory they do take up a lot of space because we've got to store all these extra references but the obvious advantage of them is they are mutable which means we can go on and change them if we compared that to something like tuples well tuples wouldn't have this property they would have to just be a sequential set of elements in memory which is very efficient but it then means that we can't go on and move them so that explains why um, lists are kind of mutable um, and why they're a good thing because it gives us flexibility but why they're a bad thing because if we're into very efficient programming they might not be the best way to do things so if that all that made sense and you have kind of got your mind around it what we need to do now is look at the implications of that and how it affects it when we call functions from within Python because that has a big impact on uh, the way that lists are mutable uh, and integers are immutable and strings are immutable. So if you want to know more, watch the next video.